Namaste everyone and welcome back to Live Stronger. Today we are going to train our shoulders and our biceps. We're going to start with the greatest stretch, 5 repetitions on each side followed by a deep squat, part of a regular dynamic stretching routine before we start working out. Remember when you are doing dynamic stretches, you don't hold the stretch for long periods of time. Anything from 5 to 10 seconds is more than sufficient just to warm up and get good amount of mobility going on. You may also do a 5 minute cardio to feel good, get your heartbeat up and that's absolutely up to your choice. But otherwise dynamic stretching should do the job. Now every time I do any kind of shoulder workouts, I also try to include a little bit of mobility drills just even before my warm up routine to make sure I am good to go because shoulders are one of those muscles or complete uh, what do you say group of muscles which can often get injured very quickly so good amount of mobility work always helps. So let's finish our deep squat and then move on to a little bit of what they call it as bear crawls. So basically you stand up straight, slowly reach down to the floor and start crawling forward and once you are almost parallel to the floor or in a push up stance, you crawl back up and repeat that at least 5 to 10 times. Even if you want you can do 5 times, take a couple of or maybe 10 or 15 seconds break and do it another 5 times. 15 to 20 repetitions should be more than sufficient to just get going in terms of warming up and also yes, just getting your shoulders working out before we start with the exercises. Now for the first exercise we are going to do cable lateral raises, 4 sets, 15 repetitions with 45 to 60 seconds break in between. Important part is to go as slow as possible while you are coming down. If you want to make it more challenging you can go slow even while going up. Now I, I, I like to do this uh, both arms at a time just save a little bit of time but otherwise if you don't have both the cables accessible if one of them is busy you can always do it one arm at a time also the range of motion or the path is always the same take the cable across your body feel the stretch in your delts and then from there you pull it up all the way get maximum amount of contraction full range of motion as you can see here clearly how my front and my lateral delts are working really hard in terms of stabilizing the cable and also pulling it apart. Now make sure you do at least one set of warm up maybe 15 to 20 repetitions on a very light weight or no weight at all and then you can start with your working sets. You can increase the weight or stick with the same amount of weight but make sure you always and always take the cable all the way across to feel the stretch and start pulling it from a stretched position to get the maximum amount of muscle growth. Post completing these we can use the same equipment and jump on to our next exercise which would be the high cable curls, the first and staple exercise for our bicep work. Again working in a stretched position, 3 sets, 20 repetitions with 30 to 45 seconds of break is more than sufficient because we will be working one arm at a time. So we don't have to necessarily take long breaks. We can also completely skip the break. You can try to do that to do all the 60 repetitions without taking a break. Basically when you are working with one arm the other arm is resting so that's how it works. Or else you can also take 30 seconds in between uh, after completing both your arms, after curling with both your arms what I mean is. Now make sure the cable is always under tension so the weight is never resting, it's always pulling you and from there you curl all the way, full contraction and full stretch. You are facing away from the cable as you can see, always face down or look forward and let my arm get stretched out behind me, feel the stretch in my chest and also in my friend delt and from there I start curling, a great way to start a bicep workout. Now for the next exercise I am going to do something different. It's basically a overhead press on an inclined bench but I figured out let me try something different. Instead of dumbbells or a barbell I am using a plate to get a little bit of neutral grip and go as slow as possible. 
Remember to keep the elbow slightly bent so you can take the arms all the way down, feel the stretch a little bit. And from there, you push up all the way. Uh, since you're on an incline, the tension keeps building up. Yes, once at your at, you're at the topmost point, there is no more tension on your shoulders. But just stop before that and then come down immediately as slowly as possible, feeling the stretch in your front delts. And in this point of view, you can clearly see how well my shoulders are working in terms of both stabilizing the weight and also pushing it back up once it's down and how my friend delts and my lateral delts are doing the majority of the work in terms of getting the weight back up. Make sure you go slow and steady. Take a plate which you can control and hold it tight because you don't want to drop the plate on yourself. So always safety first. After completing these, we do another bicep exercise, this time a different or new one to our program. It's basically cable curls, but single hand, low cable curls. You position the cable in such a way that the cable never comes in line with your arm. It's always either, I would say, diagonal or perpendicular to your wrist, as you can see here. And in from that point, take your elbows as far behind as your midline of the body possible and start curling from there. Again, we are working on our bicep in a stretched position. To emphasize more growth so the bicep is getting pulled behind and the cable is never getting straight in line with your arm you're always having the cable perpendicular so the strength curve is also absolutely different and you can clearly see how much work i have to put in in terms of curling the weight you don't have to lift extremely heavy also three sets 20 repetitions again we are going to follow the similar routine of Switching from one arm to the other without taking a break and then maybe take 30 to 45 seconds of break after completing both arms. Now you can choose to do both arms at a time if you have both the cables. But if one of the cable is busy, like here it is, if someone else is using, you can always do it one cable at a time and still complete your workout. It might take hardly a minute more. Depends upon your accessibility to both the cables. Once done, I went on to do a little bit of calf work, seated calf races this time. Since my gym doesn't have a seated calf race machine, I've done some makeshift seated calf race uh, arrangement. Regardless, three sets, as many repetitions as possible, slow and controlled repetitions, full range of motion, go completely down, heels drop, push completely up. You may also do one leg at a time, like I'm doing it here nothing changes the range of motion is still the same the uh, tempo is still the same it's just one leg at a time if you feel that while working both your legs in one go one leg is working more than the other or the other leg is pushing harder so you can always train unilateral remember to keep the weight just enough that you're able to execute full range of motion because if you push too heavy you would never be able to get that deep stretch and full contraction. The break in between should be 45 to 60 seconds, not more than that. I know we are doing failure repetitions, but calf muscles can endure a lot of work. So make sure the break is limited. You don't take long breaks. Post completing our calf work, we move back to a little bit more shoulder work, this time ray delts. I have set up the cables just uh, at a parallel height wherein my forearms are basically parallel to the floor so i set the cables just there where my wrist can access those cables and from there i started doing pull aparts basically ray delt pull aparts or ray delt flies three sets as many repetitions as possible here you want to get your ray delt to maximum amount of contraction maximum amount of stretch so you get the cables across your body as they come in front of you and from there you pull them all the way as much as possible to get maximum contraction in your ray delt. From this point of view, you can clearly see how much I pull. I'm also not using any kind of uh, feedback cushions under my armpits because to do that, if I keep them, I won't be able to pull as far behind as possible. I would stop just in between. But here I want to go through the full range of motion. So I'm pulling them all the way apart. It would still fry your ray delts. Now make sure you do take 45 to 60 seconds break in between and that should 
pretty much sum up our shoulder work. Post that, I went on to do the concentration curls with palms facing down grip. So your palms here are facing down. It's basically a pronated grip. Make sure you slightly, uh, you know, hang back a little bit. Create that stretched position like I'm doing here. Sit comfortably on a bench, legs wide open, um, well rested on your leg and lean back a little bit so that you get that stretched position and from there you start curling. Again, three sets, 20 repetitions while switching from one arm to the other. We don't take a break. Once done with both the arms, we can take 30 to 45 seconds of break. Now you may choose not to take a break at all. It depends upon your, I would say, mental fortitude of pain. But otherwise, it's up totally up to you. I prefer to take the 30 seconds break because this is the final exercise I'm going to do for my biceps. And I was already tired and fatigue was kicking in. My muscles were full of blood. I was not able to get uh, continuous repetitions. So a break is good. The weight should be just enough so that you can get the full range of motion. Now for the last exercise, again, a new experiment, I would say. I try to do lateral races using the Smith machine. So the path is fixed. This is something new. If you want, you can try. You can see how I set it up. I just lock the Smith machine just where my elbows are and then put on a cushioned, basically what they use for cushioning uh, on the rod. And from there, I started pu uh, pushing it in a lateral way or lifting it up with a lateral way, as you can see here. The reason why I'm holding it with the other arm is so that the Smith machine doesn't rotate and lock itself at any position. And in this angle, you can clearly see what I was trying to do. Basically work my lateral shoulders to give them a little bit more work. Remember, if you want to look what they call as the V-shape or V-tapered, tapered look, you want broad shoulders and broad shoulders come by big side delts, strong big side delts. So putting in a little bit more extra work for our lateral muscles. My delts, my ray delts are pretty good developed because of the all the back workouts also I do. So a little bit more focus on our lateral delts to make it a, look a little bit broader. That's it. We're done for the day. We're going to finish off with a simple vertical hang. Hang as long as possible. If not long enough, maybe 20-30 seconds you drop. Do it multiple times, maybe two or three times to get that going a little bit of decompression a little bit of good amount of stretch and also forearm work thank you so much for watching the workout if you did like the workout please do drop a like if you enjoyed it please do drop a comment and if you haven't yet subscribed to the channel please do subscribe gives me a lot of feedback at, uh, or at least positive motivation to go ahead i think every motivation is positive but regardless so please do subscribe and Please do make sure that you stretch always after completing the workouts so that you decompress, you cool down properly before ending the workouts. And that's it. So I'll see you in the next video. I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you so much for watching. Have a good day.